Apparently, she's been under the impression her whole life that a lighthouse is called a life house. And so I said, I said, all I said is that's a lighthouse. And she said, she said, that's what I said. And I said, no, you know, that, that's not what you said. You said life house with an F, you know? And then you could feel a cold Canadian wind blow through the car. Dear Shandy. Welcome back to Dear Shandy, listeners. It's a very special day today. Very special. I'm- It's special for Dove, because Dove has finally hit the big time. (laughs) I mean, after all, he's he's been toiling away for years, and now this is it. Yes. We finally Uh, made it. Our guest today, we sort of foreshadowed as saying this would be a divorced guy who you would ask questions to. But there's actually more to Dove than just being a guy we know who's divorced. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I think there is. I think there is. Yeah. We'll figure it out here. Yeah. Well, Dove is a very successful comedian. Mm-hmm. He performs at the cellar regularly. You also have a, a comedy special, don't you, Dove? Yeah, yeah, all that stuff. That he has a book. Yeah. No big deal. Big he deal. has been in multiple movies. Yeah, yeah he, was in, uh, he was in that Mark Wahlberg movie, Invincible, right? Invincible? Yeah, Invincible, that's right, yeah. And then he was in that Hustlers. Now and then they get something together, but yeah. <laughs> and yeah. also uh, on HBO's Crashing. Yep. And yep. Shades of Blue with J-Lo also. Yeah. Right. No uh, big deal. Exactly, yeah. Not many people can boast two credits with J-Lo. But, but his finest credit to date, of course, is being a groomsman in our wedding. Groomsman and dear Shandy guest. That's what goes <laughs> on my on my bed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you should knock off uh, Shades of Blue, I think. That should yeah, probably yeah, yeah. go off now. Dove, thank you so much for joining us today and letting us pick your brain. Yeah, this I, It's really just such... No, that's great. Not to sound cheesy, but it really is very no, generous. No, I've known... I've known I've been, I don't think it's particularly friends. generous. We've, I've known Andy a long time. I mean, of, of, of the aspects of, you know, generosity that are required to have a long-term friendship with Andy, this is one of the lesser... Lesser uh, challenging aspect, of that. but um, I I I, uh, I take that compliment. <laughs> no, we. I mean, I've I've been as closest of friends with Dove for uh, God. It's been oh dear, twenty two years. How long has it been? Twenty two years. Yeah, Thank you me. know, you stop counting after a while, but it's been a long time. You know, it's uh, yeah. We're still on the same five people twenty two years later. <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, let me tell Something you. Something admirable about that, to There be is, yes. Loyalty, yeah. loyalty. Uh, let me tell you, Dub, when I asked our listeners to submit questions for a divorced guy in his 40s, oh, they delivered. Mm-hmm. Uh, People yeah. wanted to know. Your only requirement, <laughs> Dub, today yeah. is to be brutally honest. Yeah. Yeah, that's my No, opinion. but Dove, Dove is never like that. I know. He, He's very reserved and uh, <laughs> often just hides the truth behind I don't think uh, I've ever heard you tell a lie ever. So let's get to the basics, Dove. Back to the beginning. Just since you are here, not to talk about all your wonderful credits, but really about your personal life. Yeah. How long did you date your ex-wife before you got married? Um, Before... Actually, being married was uh, a long time, like six and a half, seven years. But the first time we were engaged was after a couple of weeks. And then we got de-engaged and then re-engaged a couple of years after that. And then broke up a series of times in between then and the actual marriage. And so overall, we were together for 10 years. Wow. It was a very rocky 10 years. I was witness to quite some rockiness. Yeah. Okay. As Dove will attest to. Well... Gosh, am I going to jump right to the most popular question then, or should I go in order? Because that begs the question, and this yeah. was hands down the most popular question I received. Yeah, sure. Were there signs during the dating period yeah. that might have suggested this marriage might not work out? Um. <laughs> None. None whatsoever. I was, I was Smooth waiting. sailing from beginning to end. There are, there are always signs. I, look, I, there there were um, there were signs that I've turned into material like that life house bit, and then there were um, I was just writing about something else that was a very significant sign. It was an overall kind of um, moving through life with somebody without feeling acknowledged and a- acknowledgement um, in the 
productive, sort of uh, healthy form of it. Not approbation, not applause, just a general kind of acknowledgement. And I did know, we were in Costco and I was, I had the big cart and she sent me into the, the refrigerator, the walk-in refrigerator where they have vegetables and fruit. And um, she sent me for blueberries. And I walked back out. I'm telling you, there were no blueberries. And I said, I said, yes, nothing, nothing, nothing there. And then she looked at me with such disappointment. And she turned and she, you know, how when somebody walks when they're angry, she had a walk that was, that, was <laughs> that diminished everything I had ever done, been or thought about. And she <laughs> huffed into that container, comes back out with a, with a red, red, in the container, she said, I got raspberries. And we start walking. I'm waiting to hear, you understand? I'm waiting to hear, hey, Dove, there were no blueberries. This mother, <laughs> can you imagine to not acknowledge that there wasn't a blue? She said, you're in your head. You don't see anything around you. You got to say to somebody. You understand? You say, hey, you know what? This time you were right. No blueberries. So this so. brings me, well, we'll return to that. But this brings me to uh, my second question on the list was, how long have you been divorced? Because it sounds pretty recent. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I, I um, what's the term? There's a psychological term. No, you can recall something, um, an experience that, even though it happened years ago and emotionally it's as though it's very, very recent and alive in you, but there's a term for that. There's a, hmm. Oh, perseveration. Whoa. Perseveration is Take it there. easy. Easy there. Whoa. For no, no. Time. Emotional and involved and upended. And that's my pathology. I'm not just pointing the finger, but I knew that an overall lack of acknowledgement and a general dismissal of certain aspects of reality. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so that's interesting then, because you, a lot of questions did request that you set your ego aside. Yeah, of course. So, yeah, and so obviously the way you see it is she didn't acknowledge you. Yes. In what ways do you think you also contributed to a dynamic where maybe she didn't want to acknowledge you or well, didn't? even see what needed to be acknowledged? That's a very good question. And the answer is that uh, in, in myriad ways, I contributed to the things that made her not want to acknowledge, that made her passive aggressive, that made her angry. I become, my pathology is becoming upended by things, is getting too emotional um, or upset about his an incident or, a, or something. And for somebody that's not used to real open kind of, I grew up in an environment where people would yell things. And if you come from where Jessica comes from, there are aspects of her that don't mesh with me. And perhaps my need for acknowledgement is representative of a chip that I had on my shoulder from a place where if I didn't assert myself, if I didn't go over the top, not only would nobody would nobody realize I was there, but I would be taken advantage of by these mumsas, you understand? I grew up around the, the yeah. guy. Yes. So the, that's the, my fault. I actually would like to stop there. And I would like you yes. to give a, not extremely detailed, but enough for people to get it. Yeah. Your upbringing and your parents, and just generally well, where you I came from. I grew up in a junkyard in Jersey, but my mother, my mother was, my father was an uneducated Jewish business guy from the street, and my mother was a hippie wasp analyst, intellectual Ivy League from, uh, from California, and she was on her way to India to teach piano, and she stopped off to meet her friend who was a lesbian who owned a monkey, and the lesbian was renting this old shack from my father near a junkyard. And then, then they got together, and my father it turns out he was <laughs> he was uh, he would shake it up from time to time with a man. But also, my mother was on a commune, and they believed 
that the nuclear apocalypse was inevitable. They would be saved by a force field. But they were, uh, but then it was back in a junkyard, but then we were in India on a commune. So it was a, it was a, it was a launching pad for somebody later on in life. It becomes upended by blueberry by not being acknowledged that there was oh. no blueberry in the walk-in refrigerator. <laughs> I, I just I don't want to uh, to to min- minimize the insanity of his upbringing. Yeah. Just to be clear, there is a lot of behavioral traits that you develop in relationships that are a result of your parents. Absolutely. His parent, the fact that Dove and I've known him for twenty two years, and I've seen him in actually fairly functional relationships at times. Uh, you yeah. know, not not yeah. all the time, but you know, at times. I, well, I met my first long-term girlfriend in a threesome. Yeah. Oh. I mean, generally how we, nice. you know, it's not <laughs> textbook, but he's been in you know, somewhat decent, you know, stable relationships at times. My point is, is that he's overcome an enormous uh, number of obstacles mm-hmm. put in place by his parents who were, let's be honest. I mean, I love your mother. Yeah, yeah. She's wonderful. What you're saying is that there was no modeling, no sort of appropriate model with which to draw draw from. And so, but, and once we recognize that that's the case, then it becomes our responsibility. It becomes a journey of self-awareness and, and engendering honesty from other people about our drawbacks so that we can hope to mitigate or make better mistakes the next time around. Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm glad that you guys do this because it's almost like a, a like an entertaining PSA for people because you guys are representative of the most. Um, I, I mean, I don't know your dynamic intimately, but in terms of a general uh, mutual respect um, and and kind of affirming one another. You guys are as successful a relationship as I've experienced. Yeah. Thanks, Doug. Yeah, thank you. I mean, yeah, well, we we have, we had the benefit, both of us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Unlike you, a very stable. You know, they, they weren't perfect. No. My parents probably a little less perfect than yours. Yours are ridiculous. But you know, Charlene's <laughs> my, from two. No one's perfect. My parents per, uh, have their yeah, things. It's pretty close. No, you're right. My parents were great parents. But they were great parents yeah. to you. But they were also a good. They were a good example of They're what a, a relationship should be like. They were a very good partnership. The teachings of our parents gave us an, an extraordinary advantage over you, is what I'm saying. And I appreciate yeah, your, yeah, your no, thoughts. That's, all. that's true. What I'm, saying, I, what I'm trying to say is you, despite the fact that you are now divorced and living in what seems like a beautiful uh, yes. studio. In, in I'm divorced with a view. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so things are looking up for you. Yeah. But, um, you know, you have overcome way more than I think most people in your situation would have you've had several you know they haven't ended necessarily well but you've had several very function high functioning relationships i think yeah. since i've known you yeah. and i think that's a great accomplishment considering what you came from okay th- that's a good segue then what then made you want to get married in this particular relationship i was when we got married i was in my um so i'm in my mid 40s when we got married i was in my early 40s and i wanted to have a kid and i i knew that we had very significant um challenges ahead of us but i thought if not now when and i thought the aspects about her and me that didn't work together i thought we could mitigate um And I learned a very valuable lesson. One, I learned when someone shows you who they are, believe them. But also, there's a core compatibility required. Otherwise, trying to sustain one another becomes so effortful. It it is so challenging to find the language to move through life without constant speed bumps and obstacles. Speed bumps is great, yes. Mm So you wanted to have a kid. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't I, finish the thought, Charlene. Yeah. Oh, no, and I, I interrupted wanted, you. I wanted to have a kid. And at some point, you know, that's where they say timing is everything. And, of course, you can prepare better for timing to work for you, but you can't control the timing. So I could have gotten out of that relationship and searched for something 
that made more sense, and perhaps I didn't have the uh, brains, confidence, or self-esteem to do so. But I also ran the cost-benefit analysis, which was that how I, if I go out on a journey to find the kind of person that I think would make an ideal relationship partner in order to have a child with, there's no guarantee that that takes place. And even if that does take place, there, there are no guarantees that I'm going to be successful at, uh, that we're going to have a kid, that she wants a kid. That, those logistics are a major X factor. I, that's an incredibly honest response. Yeah, and I mean, Dove's a very unique individual, and the, the puzzle piece he was looking for to be perfect is like potentially 100 years away. If I don't have the confidence in my own psychological value to generate a relationship with somebody um, that is sustainable and likely to bear fruit in terms of a child, it's like I tried to work with what I had and I didn't have enough. Had court compatibility been there, we could work through other aspects and mitigate the challenges. But you can't make a pig fly. (laughs) <laughs> okay, so that <laughs> that brings me to another popular question. And again, this was uh, this had a lot of mention of ego. So if you set the ego aside, would you say then the true reason this didn't work out was a lack of core compatibility? If you had to distill it down to one thing, it's a very good question. Um, yes, in in the psychological lexicon, they call it characterological, which are immutable aspects of ourselves that are unlikely to change. So somebody that is a relatively hot-blooded person will continue to be hot-blooded. It doesn't mean that they won't jump out of their car in traffic. And I'm sorry, it doesn't mean that they will continue to behave like that. But they will still be characterologically whoever they were when you met them. Yeah, core compatibility. That brings us back to episode five with Margie. We had Margie on. Of course, you know Margie. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, Yeah, it's a good good one. She said one of the top mistakes people make in relationships is trying to change their partner. That's right. Because when, look, if we're doing the right thing and we have some regard for one another and we can hear, we can mitigate, I can turn down the volume on aspects of my personality. That would clearly rub any human being the wrong way. <laughs> but, <laughs> but I can't become someone someone else. And you know what happens as a result of the lack of core compatibility? And this happens in friendships, and it happens when I go to California. Hmm. Uh, there is, there's a phrase, and it's, it's very operable. People should become familiar with it. it, it and the phrase is inference patterns. And we're often using language, but our inference patterns are so different from one another that we're missing every aspect of the communication. So the language is similar, but the meaning is so different. You'd be better off had you both been speaking two separate languages and got translators. (laughs) My inference patterns from this effing Canadian was so incredibly different. There was nothing we saw the same way. Nothing. Dove's opinions. Heard. Which, by the way, has Dove's nothing to do with opinions do not reflect your Shandy's opinions about Canadians. Well, yeah, I was about to say 25% of our listeners are Canadian, but the fact that you guys didn't work out had nothing to do with Jessica's Canadian. No, no. I love the Canadian. You understand? If everybody yeah. was Canadian, we'd all be in a better place. I, I'm not Definitely. Canadian. This Canadian... And by the way, she's a sweetheart of a human being. She's lovely. Oh, lovely. We, we Absolutely all love lovely, Jessica. by the way. Just Sorry? Lovely. Well. I, I adore Jessica. Absolutely. Yes. Lovely. It's easy to adore that which we don't have to endure. When you live with her, it becomes, uh, you know, it, it's, you know. And would you when, say she would say the same thing about you? <laughs> would you say she would say the know. same she, thing about you? Okay. Yeah, I think she would. I think she would. Listen. I, there's no doubt about it. I mean, I bring my own baggage and I'm responsible for that outcome. It wasn't as though I didn't see things on the horizon. So I'm I'm not anti Jess. I actually No, I Jessica with that. Jessica with the right person could have a wonderful relationship. But you know, it brings me to a point that I, I, I think I've mentioned before. 
on this podcast. I'm sure you have mentioned it. Is what that, point is it? <laughs> well, I'll mention it now if I haven't. When you break up, yeah. anyone, when anyone breaks up ever, it's over. I firmly believe that. If you break up, it's over. Ooh, that's and it's, a big and there's one. only one exception to the rule. And I'm going to get into how that's obviously, you know, they broke up, I think, like more than once. But unless it's for something acute, like you got drunk and you, you know, you Cheated. made out with some girl in a bar and you got caught, blah, blah, blah. Those can, those can be overcome. Those are acute one-time events. Right. But if you ever break up for structural reasons, right. you're, you're done. And, and I knew, and not, I'm not saying like, ah, I told you so, but yeah, you know, yeah. let's be honest. We all knew that this was a tenuous marriage to begin with. Yeah. Even on your cake, Dove, Dove had a, a wedding cake where it said, I, what, did, what did it say on the wedding cake? Well, to all those who, who thought we wouldn't make it, you can suck it. <laughs> That's literally what it said on the, birth, on the wedding cake. I hope there's a photo of that cake. There is many. I have here. a photo of the okay. cake. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, wait, wait, I have to get this. Wait, in. so are you I, getting an I told you so for his cake? No, no, that was I, an I told never, you so. Not, what am I? I'm no, not, what I'm saying is his cake was an I told you so. His cake was an I told you so, but but also became a sort of a meta I told you so against him. But you know what's, <laughs> what's amazing is the day that you got divorced, I got one of those like Facebook, you know, four year anniversaries of the picture of your cake. Wow. Oh, that's funny. Isn't that crazy? Wow. Yeah. Good old you know, Facebook. <laughs> Good, yeah, time. <laughs> Good stuff. But, but my, anyway, yeah. getting back to my point is, is once you break up for structural reasons, I believe the relationship is over. And I know that as you discussed, you wanted a kid, which is totally understandable. Uh, you did the CBA, whatever. But we all had a feeling, and I believe you and probably Jessica as well, thought that this this marriage was tenuous. It was a little fragile. And I, and, and I do think that the first time you broke up and then got back together, I personally didn't have a lot of high hopes for the relationship. I was I applauded your efforts to yeah. make it work. And I knew yeah. that you were doing it for many like internal reasons yeah. that go back way back to your childhood. I applaud you for that. But from the outside, um, as a result of the first breakup and the reasons why you broke up, we all weren't super confident about it. I totally agree with you. And if I if my relationship were an investment vehicle, I would only put risk capital up. I would never I would not go long in a meaningful way in terms of a that would not be a major part of my portfolio. I would underweight that investment. <laughs> OK, I have so many questions. I don't know where to go, but okay. just so that I get a closed cap on this one. Do you then think that this was an unavoidable outcome with you and Jessica? Yeah, I do. And that's why I have more peace of mind around the divorce. Had I gone out and and acted out lesser parts of myself and done something stupid or carried on an affair or, you know, uh, uh, in terms of like, you know, the um, the offenses that one can commit in a relationship or in a society, it ranges from like, you know, light traffic ticket misdemeanors to triple homicide. And it's like everything that happened, I tried to work with. And we have seen three therapists, three or four, four actually therapists. One of them was mine. And then we saw three couples therapists because we didn't like the first. Long story short. You we tried. No, he, he made a big effort. Yeah. He made a big effort. We work to find the center. And a lot of the work was because I had a, a kid and I want, I want to wake up with my kid in the morning. And that was really hard for me to, to find. I have to work for the decision to remove myself from that relationship because the, the cost is, um, is high. So the benefit must be really high. And the benefit is my peace of mind and and overall, the ideal vessel to raise a child is, you know, a nuclear family and outside of a tribal environment in Uganda. But I don't have that as an option. And so, <laughs> yeah, I worked to find the, the failure. It's a it's a good death. It's a samurai's death. And the part that will jam Jess up moving forward in a relationship is she'll find somebody that doesn't immediately attack a problem or have an active observation that makes her feel defensive. Mm. But when she, you'll have to, people have to learn to ask for what they need in a 
in a, in a productive way. Otherwise, they'll always be left feeling on the outside of their own desires. And a lot of people did want to know that if you guys had tried couples therapy and you're confirming not only did you try it, you tried it many times. I, I, I tried it in the, in the same way a Portuguese water dog tries swimming. It, it won't come out of the lake unless you pull it out. I tried plenty. That was a horrible analogy, but I tried. I got good and wet in the late in the in the in the yeah. So to get back to Andy's point, do you agree then that if it ends once, it's over? I'm not sure I agree with that. Mm. All, if only because not because of my own experience. I'm just I, based going on by my own experience, I agree with you. Empirical evidence and just basic understanding of human relationships. I think there are a lot of people for whom it does end then, up working. Then they've settled. If there was a good enough reason to break up, and again, not for acute reasons, but for general reasons, if there was a good enough general reason to break up in the first place, it's over. With no exception. None. Uh, I see. I don't love how, like, final All you're, right. you're well, saying that then, is. But then, you know, people no, who don't I, love that end up in a, in a terrible marriage for the rest of their life. No, but what I have to admit is based on my own experience. If I think about the relationship I've had where in a Dove slash Jessica way, there was the on and off, on and off. The first time it was off was when it should have been off, mm -hmm. based on my own experience. Right. But I know there are people where it's like, t you know, everyone says timing is everything, and sometimes one person just needs that extra bit of time. No. If you're dating <laughs> when, I just refuse to bend on this. If you're dating when you're 17 years old in high school, mm. and you break up, you're like, oh, I'm going to college, I want to see new things, and she's like, all right, whatever, or vice versa. And then 10 years later, you meet up again at a party and you start dating. That's different. No. Yeah. No. Other than that, and an acute event, forget about it. Do you have your over. thoughts on that? 100%. Yeah, I think, I mean, I find Andy generally is right about most things in life. But I feel like um, there are, I'm sure that there's an exception somewhere. But as a general rule, if, um, yeah, I don't think sustainable healthy situations are born of chaos and breaking up is a form of chaos. If you engage in it more than once or twice, if you have, you know, there are yeah. things that can happen under very unique circumstances that could require distance. May, I, I don't know, but yeah, overall people that have their shit together aren't constantly bouncing in and out of apartment buildings with duffel bags full of shit. They left over some guy's house. It is people have to True. figure out how to sustain and self-awareness will allow us to get closer to the likelihood that that actually happens. And, but, and also, uh, it, it also saves it saves the two parties a lot of energy. I mean, I feel pretty strongly about this. If you break up, breaking up is a big effort. It's a lot of energy. It takes a lot of emotional capital. I honestly think some people get off on it, though. Yeah, but then that's... It's then almost they like shouldn't they crave the breakup to then they shouldn't be in a relationship. I mean, I agree. But but if you go back, it's like breaking back into jail. You're going back in to do that again. You could save yourself so much, just your, your health, your mental health going forward, and also your opportunities. You go back to the same well again and again, you're missing out on what's what's next, what's mm -hmm. out there that you're missing because you keep going back to this broken vehicle. Yeah. So I don't know. I've, I've, I've always felt really strongly. And the regrets I have in my life of getting back together with girls that I broke up with, they're immense. Yeah. Like every single time, it was a mistake. Obviously, I mean, I'm with you now. but And every, we never broke up. I we got never it. Broke we up. never even considered Never it. even close. But every single time I've gotten back together with a girl that I broke up with or she broke up with me was a big mistake. Big mistake. Not small. Big. So, so here's my question then. You got the kid. You got what you wanted. Oh, so, I love this kid. Oh, the, got um, Emerson is tremendous. He's adorable. Tremendous. I, I'm telling you, long story short, I choose the kid uh, over not having Ever done having it. done it. So you take, so the kid is worth more than ha going through a divorce. <laughs> we keep calling it the kid. The, <laughs> That's fine. The, the it, this kid <laughs> is, is more valuable than going through a divorce make, and the financial uh, impacts and the logistical issues and all yeah, the yeah. chaos. Okay. It makes me, makes me not, yeah, not regret, regret this experience because I really did get the thing out of it that was very important. And right. um, So you do it all over again. If you had to do the I whole thing, you'd still do it for the kid. Yeah. We, 
Yeah, I think so. I said to Jess the other day, I mean, I'm in the house three, four days a week with, with my kid and Jess and I are amicable and it's all about co-parenting. But I was telling her about the best time that I had um, ever had with her. And I remember her laughing, you know, and we were on this, we had rented a jet ski and she was on the back. And then, um, and she said, that wasn't me. <laughs> 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 well, that's a good one. That sounds familiar. Andy does that to me all the time. Yeah, it happens. It happens, you know, but apparently some broad on the back of a jet ski, I really fell for it. <laughs> Ended up not being my wife. How do you do? How do you do? <laughs> I mean, you get older, you build up all these memories. It's uh, bound yeah, to happen, it's, I guess. Yeah, no, time, As your time. memory gets worse. <laughs> many years, many years. Mine gets twisted around. <laughs> okay, so... What is a new trait or feature moving forward that you didn't look for before, but now you would look for? And now that would be a deal breaker, honestly, to go with that. Oh, that's easy. A penis. I've never been attracted to women. <laughs> um, the, uh, no, the um, right off the bat, this, this core complementary thing where you communicate the I want to make sure my inference patterns in a conversation don't require constant recontextualization of everything yes. I was saying and thinking. Yes. I want something to land. I want self-awareness. I want someone who goes, all right, you know, my bad. But would you not say that she could be self-aware in a relationship that does not induce self... Um, well, you said she would get defensive. Go and ahead. I feel the need to say, Jessica knows you're here and knows you you are very vocal about your relationship you use your relationship a lot in your comedy and it's something oh, that oh yes yeah. absolutely is, I'll so be, i don't I'll want be. anyone to think that this episode oh, is like jessica's dub. given him like at least an hour and a half clean yeah yeah, right? yeah at least a good solid hour and a half oh i mean yeah i mean i'll have a lot coming down the road on divorce but um no no i also would defend anything i'm any observations i'm having about jess because ultimately um, I'm, I try to be just as critical of myself. I mean, some of the ones about her are more humorous, but, um, clearly the fact that people don't stay together because one is much more mature emotionally than the other. They're usually on some, you know, a playing field. It's so true. Mm -hmm. That has mm -hmm. two people playing this game. I can look at her and make all of the criticisms I want. But how weak, sad, and psychologically um, stunted am I to continue to stay in this game, this dysfunctional yes. tennis game? So nothing I levy against her is reflective of my lack of involvement in terms of my own actions and lack of awareness. What do you think the reason was? And I know that, you know, loneliness is one... Um aspect and sort of like at the challenge of it but what was the main reason why you just kept getting back with jessica what was what was the thing was what was the driving factor what was it, was it a part of her personality was it your ego was it loneliness was it just the challenge of like i'm gonna make something work and blah what, i mean what considering was what the cake said i feel like there was well, some I mean, challenge there, accepted involved. there was yeah but I'm, I'm curious like what can you boil it down to just one overriding aspect that you were yeah. just like, I'm going to make this happen. It took me a long time to come to terms with my own weakness, feeling very insecure around intimacy because real int intimacy means that they can hurt you. And when, when you love somebody and you have some respect for them, um, it, w it was hard for me to generate enough self-esteem to acknowledge that I can be hurt and feel very bad and sad and emotional. For Again, your own Dove's, Dove's upbringing and and the parenting is it the obstacles he's overcome to be able to articulate this. And I, be this I know. Self aware. I, say, so I always. Yeah, and I'm not just saying this because he's my friend. Was I love busting his balls as much as anybody, if not more than anybody. He has overcome what most people would have succumbed to and never become aware themselves of what's happening 99 percent of people well i'm glad we're touching on it honestly because i've had people sort of suggest like based on our story and they're like well i observe you two get along so well but i'm curious to know 
what your family life right. was growing up. Because not everyone is so fortunate to have it so easy. No. And it's very naive to think that it won't have any well, impact it's, it's, on how people will be in the relationship. I totally agree. And it's also like, it's like that, it's almost the same as like people who are born into wealth, you know, yes. where they're just like, oh, why don't you work harder? Like <laughs> you lazy welfare sucking, you know, meanwhile, they're like <laughs> born with a silver spoon. They never, you know, they never had to worry about going to school or healthcare or a roof over their head or food. And, you know, they're judging other people. So it's, it's, a, it's a similar thing. It's easy to just have great parents and be like, oh, what's wrong with you? Why can't you have a normal yeah. relationship? But yeah, Dove, get your shit I, together. I gotta say, like, and I'm not, I have friends who are complete messes who had sort of fine parents. Dove has overcome a lot. He's done a lot of work to get to the place he is. Unfortunately, you know, he had a divorce. He was a great kid. And he he he's aware of it, but I still I you still didn't answer the question. Thank you. I was hoping you would say that. Yeah, I'm getting back. It. What was the reason that you stuck the, with the it. the primary driver of why after? And I don't yeah. want to get into the details. It was a pretty bad breakup. It was pretty rough. Why yeah. did you go back? Wait, the first one, the first breakup. Uh, the, I don't remember the main one. Let's so call the, it the, main the first one. breakup was like close to a decade ago, or like how mm. you said oh, yeah. for we, ten years. Yeah, in LA, we, we've probably wow. broken up. I. We've probably broken up 20 or 25 times. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, healthy, healthy. Um, yeah. most, most relationships should have about the average of 20, 25 yeah. breakups. But, but what was, what's the answer? Why? Why oh, was oh. the, why did you go back? For, for me, um, chaos wasn't a deterrent. You know, it's, and familiarity plays a part in that. I wasn't strong enough not to. I didn't know what I, I, I wasn't enough to not continue to engage in something that was so clearly mutually destructive. But but you've had other relationships. You've had other relationships where you broke it off and you walked and you left. What's the difference? What's, what it's was the difference? It's a good point. It's because Jess is a fundamentally good person and she's not shallow and having been in a shallow world, and there is a salt of the earth aspect to her. Yes. And there were mm-hmm. things about her that I love. She's very down to earth. Super down to earth. Yeah. <clears throat> um, She's wonderful. <laughs> you know, she, a guy would be lucky to be married to Jessica. <laughs> no, 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 but, so it was my own, you know, why, you know, why do people go back? It's because they're not strong enough to not go back. They're not because. smart enough or strong enough. And, and depending on in what proportion, that will determine how much work you need to do to mitigate that and be the kind of person. We should all work to be the kind of person that doesn't just go back. There's such simplicity to that answer, but it's so true. Yeah, I agree. And I also feel that maybe that the reason why this relationship ended like that as opposed to the prior is you were a little weaker, you were older. You felt like, you know, you saw not mortality necessary, but necessarily, but you saw that yeah. Your time was was ticking. You weren't the young like. Did you feel carefree. a sense of that? Did you feel a sense of like you said you were, you were thinking about the likelihood that you would find your perfect match and then have a kid with oh, them and the number of years that might take. Absolutely, I was. It, my mortality had something to do with it, and also having really jammed things up with I, my first long term girlfriend was Roxanne, and I think that. She was a wonderful person. And if there was a human being, if there was some, you know, the old narrative about the one who got away. And the one who got away can often teach us a lot. I have no doubt that if you had dated, met and dated Roxanne in the same time frame that you met and dated Jessica, you guys would still be married. Timing is everything. And not necessarily still married. Maybe you would have fucked it up. I don't know. Yeah. With that said, would you say there was a moment, a moment, where yeah, you realized it was completely over. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, we're talking 10 years on and off. You have yeah, kids, I'll tell you what you've the gone to four was. therapists. I was in Starbucks on my way to a couple's therapy. And Jessica, she doesn't project her voice, that, which is another thing that comes from her background, her child. She says she orders this latte always with these, with these drinks that take 20 minutes to make. She gets this drink and... Um, and the guy, I watched the barista trying to say something. And I said, could you speak up? And she says, what? And I said, the guy's leaning in. And she goes, no, he's not. And I knew right there, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I knew I couldn't do it. That's in like, in like uh, Family Feud, the number one answer. Is, uh, 
<laughs> not speaking loudly enough to the barista. In, uh, no, no, it Starbucks. wasn't. It wasn't the. the no, no, it was this cam- It was the straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah, the straw that broke the camel's back was her denying my experience of the barista leading in. And she said, "I didn't see him do that," but she said, "No, he didn't." She denied right. my reality. Mm. Yeah. The Starbucks thing is nothing. That would never raise it. That, that's not a thing. The thing is what it's representative of. And when somebody really denies your experience over and over again. Do you not think that if she were in just a different relationship, she would not be the type of person who denies her partner their reality? My personality may exacerbate her yes. stuff more. Yes. Because I tend to be out and she tends to be in. Mm. And so I could have made her worse. Her way of moving through the world in terms of just needing everything to be okay. I remember the one time I beat the horn. See, what they, uh, what they call a holding period. Again, psychological lexicon. They call it a holding period, which is having this warm, sane, present experience at a very, very young age allows you to feel enough warmth, wholeness, and stability to process the inevitable car accident of our lives over, like, it's like love is an airbag for life's inevitable car accident. And when you don't have airbags, each little thing becomes, becomes too much to handle. And so better than me for that, she can find because I point at things. If there's an issue, I point. It really is just speaking different languages to yeah. each other. The frustration just keeps mounting and mounting. Yeah. So that moment in Starbucks, yeah. how long before it was officially over was that? Like, how long did you think about it after? 20 the minutes. <laughs> Papers signed right outside the Starbucks. Well, I'm telling you. No, maybe 12 minutes because we had made it from Starbucks into couples therapy. No, no, I'm dead serious. I'm not joking. Oh, no, I believe you. Down the driveway into couples therapy, up two flights, into the office, sat down. I said, I, 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 I think I want a divorce. That's exactly what happened. Wow. And how, what did she say? I couldn't hear her because she whispered just like the guy at Starbucks. <laughs> I mean, was it mutual? It wasn't not mutual, but yeah, I mean, we clearly were not, it's not like that the, the issue of divorce was new. That was just the first time I ever said with any resolution, I want a divorce, but mm. we had clearly been headed for, for, you know, a not happy ending for a while. We actually, I, I lost, but I, we put the over under at five years. We have a, we have yes. a, as you know, yes. we have a close knit group of friends. We put the over yes. five. Years. So um, I actually bet the over. I had yes. faith. I, I was thinking six, seven years, but I lost. Well, you think even if you make it three, three years that aren't horrible, you think you know it takes two years to figure out to get miserable right. enough to have the right. divorce. I so would just have bet for, the over on five. I would have yeah. said the over too. Yeah, you lost me money. So just for anyone me. listening, you were married for three to four years. Yeah. Oh yeah. Four. Okay. Um, yeah. Yep. And that was after dating on and off for a very long time. Yeah, three to four. Okay. Right. This was another very popular question. Yeah. Because many of our listeners are female, and many of them are dating divorced men who tell them they will never get married again. Yes. Would you ever get married again? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. I think, it's, I think it can be a wonderful thing. But these women have to remember to not make the same same mistake. You don't get in life what's fair. You get what you negotiate for. They must make sure that they identify men. If marriage is an objective and children are an objective, don't hang out with some guy for three years mm. unless you know that, that, that that's a possibility. And don't, don't be ashamed to say that that's what you're looking for. Right. Okay. What would it take for you to get married again? Just to find that... Um, it would have to, there would have to be all of the stuff we've been taught. I mean, core complementary stuff, you know, it's like, I mean, I had a fantasy. I was that I was, that I was in Los Angeles when I was living in LA. This is why I, I think part of the pressure I put on myself to make it work. I had a fantasy that I was, um, 
standing in front of the comedy store on the Sunset Strip in Los Angeles, and it was dark and raining. And on the other side of the street, it was light and sunny, and my ex-girlfriend was walking along the street with a husband and a kid, and they were eating ice cream. And I remember seeing her see me. And then I realized that when she saw me, I was wet with an open shirt and a gold medallion talking to some stripper about how I know people with good coke. And I, <laughs> I thought, I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> I don't want to be the ever wet on the sidewalk talking about coke while on the other side, it's sunny. So wow. the weather plays an important part in that. Yeah, you know. it had nothing to do with the people in the fantasy. It was just weather. <laughs> <laughs> so based on your experience, when yeah. a guy says that to a woman, he's divorced and he says he'll never get married again, do you think he genuinely means that or do you think it means that the woman he's with is simply just not Look, what he's You're with? right. It could mean either one because if he's not serious about her and just wants to see her, that's a good way to be honest in a veiled way about them. But... Mm -hmm. If I'm a woman and I'm genuinely interested in that and somebody says I'm not interested in that, it doesn't matter why he's saying it. you got to have the strength to yeah. believe people when they tell you who they are. Believe them. Uh, mm -hmm. it, yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to get married and he's saying he's not willing to get married. But it, I don't care why he's saying it. Believe him. Yeah. If you want yeah. kids and women, listen, you know, if you want kids and you're a woman who moves to the big city and spent 10 years in school or doing whatever she does, and your time horizon to have a kid is X, don't play games with every with, with these people you meet in a bar and a guy that he wants to commit, but he doesn't, but this, but that. Just like my failure, it's their responsibility to keep that guy honest. And if he's not honest, you know, tell him to walk. He's got to go. Okay. <laughs> That's such good advice. I agree. So I have two more. And I think we can wrap up. If you could only pick one thing, what is the single best thing about getting divorced and the single worst? It's a two-parter. Oh, oh, the worst is I don't wake up with my son. And the best mm. is um, that I don't wake up with having to deal with her every day. <laughs> you, you missed the time. The cadence there would have been beautiful if you just said... Uh, that waking up with your son, waking up with your wife. You really missed out on a great, uh, <laughs> a great bit there. <laughs> you take, take that to the woodshed, bring it back. <laughs> okay. And to close, what is this most significant lesson you learned about yourself through it all as a partner in a relationship? To feel, to allow myself to feel things and to feel that things might not be okay and sit within that. It sounds very like, you know, meditation, Buddha thing, but it, when you, I, I always, it's a, I ref, reflexively, when there's a problem, I'm pointing at it and there's energy. And if I can sit in my, the sadness of my own decision-making while still saying, listen, I need this from you. But if you don't, do this for me. I'm not going to become upended. I'm going to leave you. And that's going to hurt me too. And so it's a real, it's real strength as opposed to fear biting, which is what a lot of us do. It's, it's a fear bite to, to defend from our own lack of self-worth. So yeah, to, to be sad, to just be sad and say, I'm sorry, but this won't do. Mm. Hmm. would you say that stubbornness was an issue and you kind of want to see I, I, things through it's a good question but i don't think of myself as stubborn i look stubborn is the wrong side of tenacious and so i hubristically thought listen this is like clay you know i can teach her how to see the world in an appropriate way because i know how to see the world like i I haven't been like, you know, I've been able to become reasonably successful financially and go out and do things that are challenging. And so I developed this sort of confidence in my ability to shape a situation. And I have no power over somebody else's characterological state. 
my own powerlessness to change certain things has allowed me to become wiser. It's, it's why, yeah, humility and self-awareness becomes attractive. If they're deflecting and defending, I don't want to live in a house of mirrors anymore. And so we're going to have to get honest about who we are. Well, do, do you think you're scaring? Do you think you're scaring eligible women off with this intensity? You know, yeah. I've. I think it might be an issue. I think it I might think, be an issue. I think you're a hundred percent right. And my psychologist said to me, "What I learned from this relationship," he said. Um, he said, "You can't continue to become upended by something." Because that energy serves something comedic, the intense thing that, that becomes offended by, but it doesn't serve a softer sense of communication. So I think that's going to be a major challenge for me no. is for somebody to, yeah, do something that I see as kind of ridiculous and for me to not intensely go, do you realize? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. You the shouldn't goal- be doing that. The goal is, like, I guess, to find someone who annoys you less so you feel less inclined to point uh-huh, things out yes. in the first place. Well, yeah, and okay. then when you do get annoyed, inevitably, to do it with less intensity. That's the goal. Because, you, yes, that's where core compatibility comes in. See, I'll be able to mitigate some of this, but I can't be successful in sustaining anything if the other per- – if you don't have a core compatibility, then the intensity – it can work sometimes. It's true. Because you you can be very intense, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But it's not at me. Right. right. It's right. It's never at me. Right. It'll be about something else. Yeah. And then, if anything, we commiserate. Right. Or I calm you. But it's... I don't ever feel like well, I have to be defensive. Well, that's the what I was... The analogy I was making, you know, last time is about the queen bee. You know, you have to... All the workers have to protect the queen. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I always think of the relationship, a good relationship, a bad one, just kill the queen. But a good relationship, <laughs> you have to think of it as like a queen bee. Like, if there's a problem, I agree. always, the, you're always, your I first agree. priority is queen bee. So if you think like, you know, I really want to start yelling about the way she chews her food or the way yes. she, you know, talked to that friend of yes. hers or if she was fake when she smiled, like, you yes. just say, you know what? It's 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 this is not protecting the queen. But I just also, leave it alone. The things you're listing are annoying in a way that hopefully you would not find annoying to begin with. Correct. This is also true. Yeah. Yeah. It right, shouldn't be hard. Charlene, but what you said before was that inevitably you will become annoyed by something. Yes. It's and that's true. where the that's where the compatibility thing will ser- serve you because you can become annoyed once in a while and you can have an argument and you can have discord. You can't have it all the time. No. And you got to want to do the right thing by the other person. And you have to have more mutual respect than I've required. I've always, you know, you come off stage, you hook up with some chick, you're in Los Angeles, she's, that could be attractive if you come from a shitty environment. And, you know, but when you, when you start to grow up, it's all, it all becomes more sad if you don't start to learn. Find and feel. And feel. So to close, mm-hmm. I'm going to give you a quick three question, true or false. Yeah. True or false, Dove? Yeah. When you know, you know. True. Timing is everything. Yeah, I mean, overall, it's true. And, you know, I just thought about what the first question was. No, you don't know when you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't know when you, you know. know. Okay. That's your answer. And then timing is everything? No, no. I mean, in a way, those two are kind of interrelated. They're all interrelated. The next one is opposites attract. Yeah, you just don't want the wrong kind of opposite, you know? I mean, you can, yeah, yes and no. None of these, I'm (laughs) refusing. He hates my true or false questions. (laughs) They're very popular questions. (laughs) All of these questions are illegitimate. (laughs) Dove, thank you. That was really delightful. Yeah, yeah, anytime, anytime. Listen, 
I know my way. <laughs> I know nothing. It's amazing how how much you can know and not know anything. <laughs> it's so true. It's incredible. And 40, certainly, the more you years. the more you learn, the more you realize how little you know. Yeah. Oh yes. You got what? What plugs do you got? What do you got? What do you got coming up? I wrote a book. It, uh, <laughs> I wrote a book. Um, the uh, the uh, yeah. It's a it's. Um, no, I don't need plugs. You know, listen, I'll be at the Comedy Cellar and when they open up, they open up and, you know, I'm doing... The worst this, this plug ever. I know, he's, he's delightfully unplugy. So but Dove, we'll has, like Dove has written a book. Yeah, Road Dog. It's a memoir. Yeah. It, it, contains, uh, it contains some lovely observations about uh, life in the world and it's honest. And so if you mm-hmm. want to... If you, if you feel like reading, which uh, one yeah. out of every 16 million it's people do. The uh, worst yes. plug ever. Worst, worst. There's, there's never been a worse plug. <laughs> All right, Dove. That was really insightful. Thank you for coming on. That Anytime. took that took Anytime. guts. You yeah, gotta, thank you. Also, the thing about defense is you got to keep it up. You got to keep yeah, your head clean. Yeah. And yeah, move man. with your arms. You got to move with your head. Okay. Bye, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Dove. <laughs> Thanks. Dove. Dove. It's so funny that like I've known the guy for I've known the guy since before the internet, and now he's <laughs> like doing a podcast. It's just so weird. You guys have had a lot of times together. A lot of times. He's really a very. He's like oh, I would say in the brother department. He's oh, like that close. Sweet. Yeah. If you had a brother. Yeah, he's very very close that's friends. That's very sweet. Damn, he had some gems. I mean, I know there's like. They were diamonds in, in the rough. Like, yeah. I can see a lot of people listening to Dove and being offended or oh, yeah. making judgments. But one thing I'll say about Dove is that he is extremely insightful. Brutally and honest. Brutally honest and reflective. Like, no one knows extremely. his faults more than he extremely. does. Extremely. Yeah. Yeah. And talk about doing work on yourself. Damn. You know, you can tell by his, even his vocabulary. He's like, he's, he's studied up on this stuff mm-hmm. so much. It's and like, retains it. He could write the exam. But at the same time, it's like some of that has to be taken back like a notch when he's in the relationship. Because mm-hmm. I think he's too eager to just sort of analyze everything as it's happening yeah. in a very intense manner. And I've seen that. I've seen him do that. And I, I've told him, I'll tell him in person, you know, if I've had one criticism or one suggestion for how to keep the, the rocks out of his relationship, it's to just take that down a notch. There are certain times where you just have to have a more well, gentle Well, you know what approach. it gets back to. Episode six, nervous energy. I'm not saying his is necessarily nervous, but, you know, in the comments, a lot of people mentioned how underrated it is when your partner is calming. Mm -hmm. Like I know for me, all of my boyfriends, even the ones that drove me crazy, one thing they did have in common to become my boyfriend was a sense of of, of calming me. In in any, maybe not in all the ways, but in some way. Yeah, no, I agree. It's important. I mean, the ener- the energy, it's I would say his his energy is at times nervously aggressive, you know. And he he really he has such an appreciation for principle. Like Dove is one of the most principled people. I've seen him lay down the law. Like if yeah, some guy I love like, that about him in though. the street gets out of line with yeah. a woman or or just is acting like a jerk, yeah. is drunk, He's, and he will lay down the law. Yeah, it because it's what right, not because it's chivalrous. Oh, not because show. it makes him look good. He does it because it's right versus wrong. Yes, he feels the injustice. Yes. He feels the he, like he wants to write I it. I find that super endearing about and, him. And that works like in situations where, you know, he helps, you know, people rid something out of an environment, but when it's in the relationship, I think there needs to be a slightly softer touch. Definitely. And so <laughs> I mean, that yes, would be my been... my piece of advice to my friend Don. Yeah, yeah. Just tone it down, maybe maybe a slightly gentler touch when it comes to criticizing or analyzing things in the relationship he's not crazy about. You guys, thank you for tuning in to this unique episode of Dear Shanty. Yeah. Uh, let us know what you think, what, what you thought of this sort of format. We're interested in just getting true honesty from people who have been through certain experiences that I think change you. This mm-hmm. is, uh, you cannot be not changed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I you want to make that a quadruple negative? <laughs> <laughs> If you guys like Dear Shanty, you know what you can do, Andy. And you can tell them. I can tell them. You can like, subscribe, hit notification bells, leave iTunes reviews. That's a big one. Mm -hmm. Comment. All the things you would do to support a little podcast. And with that said, 
I think we're done for this episode. Thank you guys for tuning in. Bye.